Hi guys, welcome again to Art Piece Projects, um, courtesy of Flourish Australia. Um, these are lessons made for the um, isolation period and uploaded online. Um, today we're going to be painting a uh, eagle using acrylic as watercolour. So it means we're going to water down the acrylic paint, which is a normal paint that you often have. Um, this is part one of two lessons. So uh, this lesson we're just going to concentrate on uh, the background using the washes to create a sort of a sense of mountains receding in the distance. This is called aerial perspective, something used in the background of, for example, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Um, the second lesson, which is not this one, the next video, um, we're going to look at painting in a little bit more detail, uh, a little bit inspired by Chinese um, watercolour painting, um, and we're gonna, that we're going to be looking at, say, the Blue Mountains, or another scene that you might choose something else. But, um, but then we, we might again use this little eagle motif, which is something that we'll do today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'm walking around to find the video. We'll get started. Enjoy. Using an uh, acrylic pad, you can also use normal paper, or you can use watercolour paper, which would work pretty well as well. We're only using blue, black, and sienna, which even though it looks like red in this video, it's actually a kind of reddish brown color. The reason we're doing that is um, it's mostly a monotone painting, like it's mostly about lights and darks, but that doesn't mean we can't also make some of the darks a little bit warm and some of them a little bit cool. This is kind of handy if you want to um, get things to come forward and backwards in space, or you want to get a little bit more definition between objects in the painting. So to get the warm, kind of tones we add the sienna it's kind of a rusty brownie color to get the cool grays um, we are adding this blue which in this case is a kind of ultramarine blue but you can use any blue it doesn't matter we're using acrylic paint as watercolor assuming that you probably don't uh, or you may not have watercolors in your house uh, these are just cheap paints from the two dollar shop um, we're brushing the paper uh, one dip and then really quickly lightly over this sheet of paper that will help it to um, let the paint soften a little bit when you put it on. I'm going to do this twice in this video so I'm adding um, water and that makes it lighter so we need lots of different tones. Uh, adding water makes it lighter instead of adding white. I'm going to do an exercise now so we're starting out with a middle tone put it as a line through the middle of your piece of paper. As we come down the page we're going to get darker, as we go up the page we're going to get lighter. So this is just an exercise just for you to get used to how to change the tones by adding more water or how to make it darker by adding more paint. So the more concentrated the paint the darker it gets and the darker it gets and the, the stronger the contrast the, the more it looks like it's close to you. The lighter it gets, the more faded, the more it looks like it's disappearing off into the atmosphere. So this idea um, is an idea that's been around for a long time. You can see it in the background of some paintings, for example, or the Mona Lisa is a great example. The background of that is not the thing people would normally focus on. It's normally the lack of eyebrows. But um, anyway, the background of that, you can see things fade off into the the distance. And in the foreground things are nice and sharp and crisp and well defined. So um, in this case we're just focusing on the tones. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about the colour. It's just the tones. It's more pain or less pain. More pain is stronger, less pain is uh, weaker, lighter, more in the distance. Now we're going to try and focus on making things that look like mountains. This is another thing Leonardo da Vinci noticed that tops of mountains tend to be fairly sharp while the bottom parts of mountains where there's more dust and stuff or maybe clouds um, like hanging around in the valleys is a bit softer so we're going to put that shape down then put some water near it but not on it. That clear water is like a puddle at the bottom of the mountain and then we just brush the bottom edge and it slowly bleeds into that puddle of clear water. If we just put the water, the clear water on there and then start brushing it down, what happens is we tend to just smudge the paint down the page and we end up with a, a sharp line anyway. So 
um, I'm going to put the clear water on, so I've cleaned my brush, I've gotten clear water on the brush, there I am cleaning it, um, then I put that near it, and then I might just snick it just along the edge in it, see how it bleeds down and it's soft on the bottom, sharp on the top, so the sharp on the top is more definition, the bottom less definition, also it looks more fluffy and cloud-like, just like the exercise we did before, the ones in the background are a lot lighter, so that means we've diluted the paint with more water. It doesn't mean there's a lot of volume of water on the paint brush. It just means that the paint that we've got on it doesn't have much pigment in it. It means we've, we've, it's more watery. Now I'm going to paint a, wait a minute. I'm going to paint a um, darker one in the foreground. So then I'm going to have to um, add a lot more paint to my mixture on my palette doesn't mean I've got a lot of paint on my brush, just means I've got more paint in the mixture. So it looks darker on the palette. And then I just bring that across nice and sharp. See that sharp edge? And then that's all fine, but it's too sharp at the bottom. So what am I gonna do? Clean my brush, get some water, put that along the bottom, and then you'll see, there we go. It softens off. So we've still got that nice cloud in the valley sort of effect. I want to have a nice foreground. Maybe we're standing on something. I don't know. Um, maybe it's a cliff edge or a big rock, something like that. Um, so I want it nice and sharp anyway. Because sharp, contrasty things tend to pop forward. Look how that pops forward compared to stuff that's way off in the distance. So, I might have overdone it a little bit there, so I'm going to just add a little bit of water around the edge just to let it connect with the rest of the, the painting so it doesn't look like a, a completely separate element. So I've stood in a place like this before. I was up in um, Kosciuszko National Park. It was beautiful. Okay, so here's an eagle from Australia, it's a wedge tailed eagle, we're going to paint that. Sorry that for some reason this went on the side there, but you can get the idea. Um, so we're going to start out with a smiley face kind of curve. Um, and then we're going to draw almost like a tongue poking out of the smiley face, about one third of the length um, of that, that original line. We've got this other little line sticking out the bottom. Now I'm putting some little dots. And this is going to show you where the feathers poke out to, sort of like fingers or something. Um, it's good to define the outer limits of something sometimes because if you really need that thing not to grow and take over the whole painting as you try to correct it, um, it's nice just to put in some little skinny lines, a few dots here and there <clears throat> that'll help to guide you. And you can always make things darker, you can make them thicker. Um, but it's hard to reverse that, especially if you're using a watercolor technique, it's pretty impossible. So just go thin, go light to start off with, and then you can always um, add more definition. And here I'm just thickening, thickening it up slowly, adding a little bit more color. I've added another bird. This one's got no real color in it. It's mostly grayish, grayish blue. Same idea. It fades off in the background. A few more feathers. Um, so from here on in, I'm basically just um, adding more definition and sharpness in the foreground. I'm being careful not to let that um, eagle grow out too much without, with too much definition. And um, yeah, as I sharpen that up, I might add a, a little bit more black, a little bit more blue. On top of that brown, it, it becomes uh, more of a foreground object, it pops forward a bit. Um, I hope you've enjoyed doing this project in the next project we're going to do a little bit more with the actual landscape itself looking at the three sisters or if you want to have a look at some place where you come from probably Wollongong, the escarpment or something like that or some place that's um, important to you then um, you can use a photo or something like that and use it in the next exercise see you then thanks for joining